uh, good morning. It is our Resurrection uh, Sunday. Uh, one thing that Christians are about, uh, actually the premier thing that we are about, is that Jesus Christ really lived, that Jesus Christ really died, and then especially that he didn't rise just kind of superficially, he didn't rise in our hearts, he didn't rise because it was inspirational, but he physically, though he was clinically dead, he lived again. He lived again. And so that's what we're celebrating this morning. We don't believe in fairy tales. We think these things actually happened. We think Easter is not about uh, bunnies laying eggs. We think Easter is about this moment where Christ has risen from the dead. Let me pray, and then we're going to look at COVID-19 and Christ. Let's, uh, let's pray. Lord, uh, we thank you for your mercy and your grace on us. We pray that you would now empower me to speak rightly about your incredible grace in Christ. We pray that you would fill our hearts up with truth and help us to have peace in this situation. In your name, amen. Well, uh, as most of you know, and if you don't know, you've probably been asleep, right? I have a son, a wonderful, beautiful son. And at this point in time, he is just learning tons and tons and uh, tons. He's like a sponge. He just soaks up every little thing uh, that he sees and touches and tastes. It's all going into this giant memory bank in his head. Uh, and so uh, it might seem like he wastes the whole day playing, as it were. He has like so many toys. We bought so many toys. But when you look closer, all the toys have a purpose. They're either they're talking about learning the alphabet or numbers or think names of things. Uh, and, and they prepare him for uh, some, some later maturity some later things. So the little thing prepares him for something later. So I've got an example. I'm just going to step over here. So this is what my son was playing on uh, this morning. Um, and so all the pieces come out. Uh, and he was frustrated because he couldn't get the pieces out very easily because unless you put it, your finger into this, it doesn't come out. And then once he got the pieces out, he was frustrated because he couldn't put the pieces back because, well, you have to match it up. And you could see it wasn't just enough to goof around with the pieces. He wanted to get things right. And so this is going to lead, hopefully, to a, a later day where he will be able to problem solve uh, difficult issues that take time, uh, difficult issues that take a while to figure out. Now, it's not just the toys. It's every little thing in his life right now is oriented this way. You know, so he's making sounds. He doesn't know why he's making these sounds. Ga, ga, goo, goo, ah, 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 uh, uh, uh. He's making these sounds because they're like the root of him starting to speak. And so he, he doesn't know why he's doing these little silly things, but it's going to turn into language. Or teething. So I don't understand teething. Well, I kind of do a little bit more now. But it's, it's number one, it, it turns out it's atrociously painful. I can't remember it. I can't remember. I wasn't there. Yes, I was there, but I don't remember it. But it, it's so painful, and you can see it on his face. And, and you wonder why this is the way it is. Why, why did you do it this way, God? Well, I mean, the answer seems to be that he goes through this and he learns to persevere through pain. And then someday when all this pain is forgotten, he's still going to know how to persevere somehow in difficulty. And so everything has a purpose. So what does that have to do with the Bible? What does that have to do with the resurrection? And what does that have to do with COVID-19? I think of COVID-19 as teething. Now, I want to be careful. A lot of people have really suffered during the season. Some of us have lost loved ones. A few of us have lost loved ones. Some of us have had a very hard time with the virus itself. It's been very difficult. They may have, maybe they've caught it or a friend has caught it. It's been miserable. And I want to belittle that. And yet at the same time, this virus serves to prepare us to a more important issue. It serves to direct us towards something so much 
more important, that it's, it's even worth going through. It's worth going through so that we can realize the value and the importance of something else. And that something else is the resurrection. That something else is the resurrection. Don't believe me? Let me show you. So let me show you what I mean. The first point I'd like to make is that COVID-19, this terrible virus, is a little reminder of a much bigger virus. Much bigger. We're all infected with. It's called the sin virus. So um, looking at James 1, 3, this is what it says. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires. We'll come back to that. And enticed. Now look at this. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Now, you may have heard that the reason that we die, you might wonder, why, why, is, it that we, why is it that we die? Why does it have to be that? way and then somebody comes along and says I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you why i'll tell you why you die here's here's why you die you die because you've already reproduced your genes and so you're not needed anymore that's that's why you die and, and so I, i'm here to tell you that that is completely wrong that's not why we die and, and it doesn't even make sense that that's why we die the reason that we die the bible has a different view on sin and it tells us something shocking. The reason we die is because of sin. So look, what does it say here? It, it says that sin is like this disease. It's like cancer. It's like, it's like COVID-19. Actually, you could say that COVID-19 is like sin or the consequences of sin. COVID-19 is like the consequence. Actually, COVID-19 is one of the consequences of sin. Well, we'll get back to that. But, but sin leads to death. And, and at first, it's all innocent. At first, it's not a big deal. At first, it's like not even noticeable, the effect that it has on you. You don't even know anything's wrong. And then it grows and it grows and it grows. It's like a nasty weed in your garden that it, it's actually toxic. And it ruins the garden and kills everything. That's sin. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that sin is going to kill you and I. Sin is going to kill you and I. It is a virus, and it's terrible. Now, what exactly is sin? That's an important question. W what are you talking about? I'm not a, I'm not a sinner, right? We, we don't know what sin is precisely, but definitely we're not sinners, yeah? What, what is sin? Sin is choosing to live for self over loving God and loving others. You were not meant to live for yourself. You were not meant to survive as other people die. You were meant to live for God and live for others and love them. That's what you were made to do. You were, you were made to be a servant in the Lord. And when we say, no, I want for myself. No, life is about me. No, I'm going to do what I want. And who cares who I hurt or how I hurt them, except for, hey, I won't hurt these people, my family members, that much. But these people over here, I don't care if I can get what I want. Sure, I don't even have to see them. That's sin. And when we don't talk to God, the God who made us and loves us and cares for us, we don't talk to him because we're so busy getting our things, that's sin. That's what sin is. It's total selfish pride. And it leads to death. Just to consider for a moment, this is actually the what I just described. That, that's the mantra of society, isn't it? Isn't it the case that if we think about our heroes, if we think about those that we admire, those who are famous, they actually all follow this mantra. It is all about them. You know, they, they have lived as if it's all about them and it has brought them fame and we applaud it. But this is mainline. This is something that everybody does. And yet the Bible says it, it leads to death. It leads to death. Look. Here's a couple of the verses. Romans 6.20 says we're a, a slave to sin. A slave. Now, most of us know pretty quickly we don't want to be slaves. <laughs> so we might think we're free people. But actually, we do what sin wants. And then one day, sin turns around and says, I'm going to kill you for it. <laughs> it's terrible. 
Oh. Look, uh, another one. The penalty for sin is death. I, I've said this multiple times. If you have sinned, you get something for that. It's like working. You go to work, you get a paycheck. And if you sin, guess what happens? You get a check. And on that check it says, die. Die for what you have done. Sin leads to death. Sin leads to death. Now, COVID tells us a lot about this bigger sin virus. We may think that COVID-19 is a big virus, but actually the big virus, the one that will get every single person, is the sin virus that we're enslaved to, that is eventually going to get us. That's the big one. And so the moment that we have right now where we're feeling uncomfortable, right? We're worried about this thing and we're thinking, oh no, I hope I don't get it. And we're washing our hands way too much and our hands are way, way, way too dry because of it. Okay. We're taking all these precautions. We're being very careful. See that that's one thing that we do and we're worrying and we, we begin to think about life and what it means. And we might even think I, something is very, very wrong here. And that's thanks to COVID-19. And so there, there is a blessing in it. Seeing that we have, something's wrong. We have a need. COVID reminds us that something is really wrong. The Bible calls it sin. Now, the normal procedure is we, we, we all know people who are neglecting to be honest with themselves about their physical condition. We said that, you know, my father, it, it, he started to have this cough when he was about, about my, well, he was in college. He never went to college. He was in college, so like 10 years ago for me. Yeah, um, more than that, actually. Anyway, but um, goodness, I'm getting old. But um, when he was in college, he got sick, and he, he, he just kept telling himself, I'm not too bad. I'm not bad. He was coughing a bit, and, you know, just the sort of thing that might happen with, you know, COVID-19 is they're going, oh, I don't think, oh, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm sick, right? And, and so finally, after about a week of this, my, my father was feeling fairly weak and he thought, okay, I need to own up and go to the hospital. So finally he said, yes, I really truly am sick. And he went to the hospital that afternoon and the doctor's looking over him and he's like writing him some prescriptions and he's like, okay, we're going to take you in the other room and give you some treatments right now because if you had come in tomorrow, you would be dead. And he totally ignores the issue and see we, we ignore the issue of sin we exult, ignore the sin virus i'm a good person it's not so bad i can make it i don't need to see a doctor that's a huge problem so that's point one the next point is more positive goodness uh, now that we can see our dire predicament i want to tell you the good news the good news unlike covid there is an antidote to this terrible sin virus okay and it's free and it's available and it works 100 percent of the time it's like everything that we're dreaming about finding uh, it is and it is what we are celebrating today the death and the resurrection of jesus christ is the answer to our huge sin problem so uh let's look at romans 5 18 on this actually uh romans 5 18 we're going to see a little bit about this. This is what it says. But the gift is not like the trespass. For let, if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many? So um, there was a, a problem, there was an issue, and the issue relates to, the issue relates to us getting something bad from one person, and the person is Adam. And what happened is, Adam had this choice. Way back in the day, there were these two human beings from which all human beings have come, and God said to these human beings, you can do what you want. You can live for yourself, uh, or you can trust me. There is this choice that was put before uh, Adam. A and so, unfortunately, what Adam chose to do is he chose to say, yeah, I'm going to do what I want, okay, at the bidding of the serpent in the story. 
He chooses to be self-autonomous. He chooses to, to live for himself and for his own things. And he says, I I'm off, God. And he thought that that decision was kind of a one-time decision. And Eve probably thought that decision was a one-time decision. But then they had kids, and the kids somehow had that same propensity to say to God, I, I want to trust you. And then their kids had kids, and it was the same thing. I don't want to trust you, God. I'm going to live for myself. And then it, 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 it comes down all the way uh, to us. It comes down all the way to, to today. We have the same propensity that they have. And, and so it's really, it's a tragic story. It's a, it's a tragic story about how we got this terrible disease from our parents. And maybe you uh, have things from your parents that you, you don't appreciate. Maybe some behaviors that you're, you're not happy with and, and they're, in, they're in you too. You wake up one day and you say, I'm just like my parents. And you don't mean that in a good way. You mean they did this terrible thing and you kind of do those same lame things. Or maybe you have a condition that your parents had. It's been passed on genetically. So we have this genetic problem. Every person has this issue with, with trusting God. And we, we do sin. We, we, we fall into sin. We're prone to go there. It's just we, we saw in the last passage, the, the inclinations of our heart are, are evil. And the reason they're, they're evil is because of this one man, Adam. But... There's another man, okay? He was disobedient. Adam was disobedient. But there's another man, and this man was obedient. And it says that everyone, in the same way that Adam just ruined all of our genetics, right? We got bad stuff from Adam. We got a propensity to give into sin. Just as that happened through Adam, it, it can also happen that we'll get some good stuff through this one obedient man. Well, what's this talking about? It's talking about Jesus Christ, and it's talking about the cross. So Jesus Christ came. He, he lived a, a perfect life. He didn't have our sin problem. He didn't have our propensity to do what Adam did. But then he died. And you remember that the penalty of sin is death. And so here he dies, but he doesn't die for himself. He dies for us. He, he dies so that we don't have to die. And the picture that I want you to get is we're thinking about COVID, right? There are doctors, and they full well know that they could catch the virus, okay? They're around COVID patients and COVID-19 patients all day long, and a few of them have said, I'm going to catch this virus, and, and, and they have. In fact, one particularly famous one says, we need better equipment. Uh, he caught the virus just as he said, I'm going to catch the virus, he said. He did catch the virus, and he, and he did die. And he still would choose to do that, you see. He's going to treat the patients, and even though he didn't have the virus, he catches the virus because he's around the patients, and he says, you know, it's okay for me, for me to die. I, I just need to save these people. And that's what Jesus has done for us, you see. <laughs> that's what Jesus has done. He has done the work of dying on our behalf so that we could live. Imagine if you were one of those patients where you are. Christ has died for you. That's the good news. That's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, this is really interesting because the Bible talks about how uh, Jesus' blood covers us, and that, that even takes us further. You know, we have this situation where we're looking for antibodies in the blood, right? It's like Jesus has given us his blood, and his blood is what is going to save us. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. That's what the cross is all about. Jesus died for me to save me, to bring me to fellowship, to save me from the sin virus. Because I mentioned that nobody can escape the sin virus and that we're all enslaved to the sin virus and there's no way out. So if Jesus doesn't do this, we're pretty much out on a limb here. Jesus died. And through that one man comes all of these people who will be saved from his blood. Consequently, um, the resurrection, what we are celebrating this morning, is proof positive that Jesus truly beat death. You think about someone who has uh, COVID-19, okay? My, my, I have a relative who has it. And um, 
they're now better, okay? And the way that we know they're better is that they've now gotten out of the bed and they're walking around and they're eating food again and they're now they're really okay with going outside because they've gotten the virus and they're not worried about getting it again, okay? <laughs> Which is terrific. I wish that was my case. Uh, anyway, uh, you know that they've recovered. See, seeing Jesus come out of the grave tells us, okay, sin did its worst to, to this man and yet he lives. And if we trust him, we will live to the resurrection proves to us that there is a cure for our sin bites. And that's why it's worth celebrating. It's worth celebrating. It is our freedom when Jesus rises from the dead. It gives us hope too. It gives us hope too. Now, some of you might respond, listen, I just clicked on this link uh, and I'm listening, but I don't think there's any proof for the resurrection. That's what you said. And Really, to be honest, that's beyond the, the scope of today's sermon, but I did preach a sermon last Easter on this very topic, uh, and I, I'll include the link below um, so that you can go and look. It's minute seven of that sermon. I've gone ahead and looked it ahead. It's minute seven is where I begin to talk about the proof and how we know for sure that Jesus rose from the dead. Here, we too truly believe that Jesus was a real man, that he was really God, and he really came down, he really died, and he really rose again. We believe those things. We we don't believe fairy tales. It's based on facts. And this man rising from the dead is so important, it tells us that we have hope. So if you're interested in that, if you want to understand where we're coming from, you want to see the debate, you can go and look at that and many other resources, really. It's the beginning of a journey for you, I think, that is worth looking into. But now let's wrap things up. So what does this mean today? There is a sin virus. It will kill us all. But Jesus paid the penalty and is the cure for us. Now what? Well, a few things. For us, it's true. Um, you know, you have a choice of about whether you get the antidote or not. So, uh, you know, today, if we hear that there is an antidote out there that works, perhaps it's the malaria one, probably not. Maybe it's the one that everybody's been working on like crazy and they test it super fast and it's out there and, and you can get it. That's not the same as you did get it. it just, the, just the fact that it's out there doesn't mean it's in you, you see. You, you need to take it and receive it, you see, and, and bring it inside in order for it to save you. So now you've heard some very good news this morning, but that's not enough just to hear you see. What you need to do is take that inside and let it change everything. And so the way you take Christ is through faith. It's by believing in him. It's by confessing that you're a sinner and that you need help and asking him to be your Lord from now on. It's a response of faith to Jesus's death. How, how do you respond to the cross? How do you respond to the resurrection? It determines everything and whether you're going to take this medicine or not. And so if you don't know a moment where you said, God, I, I, I want the medicine. I'm sorry for my sin and I want to live for you. Well, you don't have the medicine yet, and you want the medicine. So later on today, and this is an important thing, God is asking for you to give your life back to him. It's not a small thing. Give it some thought. In five minutes or so, we're going to talk again. And if you would like to invite Jesus into your life, I'm going to pray a simple prayer. I encourage you to pray along with me, to invite Jesus into your life, to give him your heart, to ask him to forgive you of your sins, and to cure you of this terrible virus. Uh, I have three more applications, okay, for uh, believers now. What does COVID-19 mean, mean for us? What does it mean for us? It, what are we supposed to be doing right now exactly? Just watching the telly. Oh, this one's boring. Okay, flip over here. Maybe I'll find something on the internet. Is that what we're supposed to be doing with our time? Um, there are some things that God wants us to do. Let, let's go through what they are. The, the first one I have is that God is calling his people to pray and repent. And the verses that I want to read are 2 Corinthians 7, 13. It says this, God is speaking. When I shut up the heaven, there is no rain, or I command the locusts to devour the land, or I send pestilence among the people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. So COVID is different than all other um, diseases that have come before it. And primarily the way that it's different is because we have transportation grids that go so fast, it's spread all over the entire world. Whereas before you had these diseases and they would be fairly localized, like all of Europe or all of Asia. Or if they did go from Asia to Europe, it would take a long time to get there. Now, lightning fast. And it's affected the whole world, really. 
this has never happened before. Everybody is noticing, and most people are sitting in their houses uh, and waiting for it to, to pass. And this isn't an accident. God allowed COVID-19 to come. And that's the plague here. It says plague. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about stuff like this. And so one gets the idea that God may want us to pray and repent of a lot of things. Personally and as a church. His fellow believers, he's calling us to prayer and repentance. He's calling us to turn towards him. I sure hope during this time that you are turning towards Jesus. I know that's what I need. God is calling you to repent and to pray. Maybe you need to talk to somebody about uh, things that you regret. Maybe you need to confess some sin. God is calling us to pray and to repent and to turn towards him. Another point, replace fear with faith. 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Here's the idea. Jesus died for us. Why did he do that? Because he loves us. Why did he love us? Because he's loving, not because you deserve it. If he's loving like that, then what exactly are you afraid of if you belong to him? You shouldn't be afraid of anything. You shouldn't be afraid of anything if you belong to Christ. Because you are loved and God's love is powerful. He's never, ever going to let you just go. Now, he may allow you to die. Like, actually, there's eternity coming. Huh? He may allow that. He will never, ever let you go. And so that's, if you cast out the fear. Let me read another one. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says this. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others have, who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And so what this is saying is that while the rest of the world is so terrified about death, and grieved because they never think they'll see their loved ones who have passed away ever again. We can say, for us who believe, we will see our loved ones again. And I am looking forward primarily to seeing my son Noah. Okay, It's on the promise of Christ that I'm going to see him. And you're going to see your loved ones if they believe on the promise of Christ. And so you don't have to grieve for forever. And you don't have to be fearful of death. Last one. Live for God right now. Not later. Live for God right now. Now is not the time to spend more time on the telly. Now is not the time to spend more time on Xbox or on the internet or on TikTok for you young people. Okay, Now is not the time to waste. I know you're stuck in a house, but God has opportunity for you. Now, um, the, the example I want to give is Paul, actually. When Paul was later in life, okay, uh, he he was in jail. He was in prison. And it's like he was in prison and he was in prison and he was in prison and then they took him out and executed him. That's how he ended his life. That's how it is. Okay. And during that time in prison, he cried a lot and uh, moaned about it and he found something to be interesting to watch on the telly. No, that's not what Paul did. What Paul did on those last years of his life is he wrote a lot of the epistles. That's what Paul did when he was in jail. He wrote the things that ended up in our Bible. Okay. Uh, in fact, a uh, kind of a third of the epistles are things that he wrote while he was in prison, okay? And not only did he do that, he went about um, spreading the gospel. How did he do that in the jail? I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that God is saying, live for me today. Paul, Paul wrote this. Um, uh, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live by faith. So this morning, you have the choice to live by faith, you see. You can live by faith amongst these four walls. You can live for Jesus amongst these four walls. You can do that even during COVID-19. I promise you. And so uh, if you're able to get up and go somewhere, oh, by all means, go and help somebody if, you can, if you're sick, you see. Okay? But go and live for Christ. Whatever you do, do it as to the Lord with all your might. So those are my uh, examples for the church. Now let's return to do I know Christ? Do I have the tear? I'm going to pray uh, a prayer in a moment. And I'd like you, if you would like that tear, to just pray along with me. So let's, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, thank you for being um, merciful. And thank you for Jesus coming to earth and dying. I know that now that he died for my sin. I admit that I am a sinner. You know all about my mess and my sin. 
You know that I don't even know how to stop. You know what I've done and I apologize. Please forgive me through the cross. Please forgive me by dying the death that I deserve. From now on, help me to live for you. And take me to heaven at the end of my life. In your name.